Hi there! My name is Dr. MJ Roland Varman. I'm a dentist based here in Liverpool, UK. My practice is limited to aesthetic medicine. In my day-to-day -day life, I see a lot of aesthetic complications, for which I run a dedicated complications clinic. Today, I'm going to share with you a case where ultrasound really came into its own. I'm going to use my L20 to solve a case where permanent filler had been placed some years previous and which was now causing significant problems. In cases like this, an injector's diagnostic, ultrasound and patient management skills are really tested to their absolute limits. I cannot wait to share this case with you, so let's get started. Let's get to our case. This is our patient. She is a 57-year-old lady who is suffering with significant aesthetic disfigurement due to pre-existing filler treatment. As you can see, the mid-phase appears very overfilled and lumpy. She reports that she had a product called BioAlchemid around 15 years prior to treat facial volume loss. She describes there was some mishap with it on one side. She's never been completely happy with its appearance. Over time, she has noticed that the surface has become lumpy, especially around the nasolabial fold where it feels harder. She is not in pain, has never suffered any redness or irritation. Her aims are simple. She wants an aesthetic improvement. The temple and lateral face are bothering her as these are very hollow in comparison to the mid face, which is bulging. There are indentations on the surface of the skin. On palpating, I feel fluid movement beneath my fingers. When I press on the mid face, the lateral cheek pops out and vice versa. It feels like a significant deposit under the skin. So let's check this with ultrasound. There's a very large, homogeneous, mass-like hypoechoic structure with a thin, poorly defined hyperechoic border. There are irregular hyperechoic internal reflections which vary with application of pressure to the area. This means it's liquid inside. You can see the fluid moving back and forth. It exhibits posterior acoustic enhancement. Comparing it to the other fillers we've just seen, this is definitely polyalkylamide and is the typical presentation of this product in its liquid or semi-liquid form. Infraorbitally, there are significant polyalkylamide deposits. Here you can see the infraorbital foramen in close proximity to the filler. You can see a thin sliver of orbicularis oculi overlying the filler. Compared with normal anatomy where all the tissue layers are clearly recognisable, in our patient the anatomy has been severely disrupted by polyalkylamide. The hypoechoic deposits extend laterally along the orbital rim. In the mid-face there is a similar picture of large mass-like deposits of hypoechoic polyalkylamide with its characteristic internal reflections. Laterally in the mid-face is a more calcified structure within the polyalkylamid which is firm on palpation. More laterally still is a homogeneous hyperechoic structure which is the parotid gland. Again, there's significant polyalkylamid deposits associated with the parotid and deep to the parotid fascia. In the region of the zygoma, deposits of hypoechoic polyalkylamid can be seen in the superficial and deep compartments separated by the SMAS layer. Completing our overview scan of the mid-face and coming back to the infraorbital area, it's evident that we have a significant filler load to our patient's mid-face in both the subcutaneous and deep fat compartments and extending between the tissue layers. This presentation is replicated on the contralateral side and also extends into the lower face and into the jowl. Here we can see there is filler encroaching on the parotid gland and that it is even displaced into the parotid. That leaves us just one obvious option, ultrasound guided injection of poly -L lactic acid. It ticks all of the boxes and there are many long-term studies citing satisfaction rates of over 95% plus over multiple years. Whilst it doesn't grow fat back, it improves dermal thickness. Complications are rare, most notably nodule formation which happens in around 5% of cases. They don't usually cause aesthetic problems, they resolve on their own. So I felt this was the best option for her. It's not a complete resolution, but a compromise. The upper temple is clear of polyalkylamide. 
This anechoic structure is the superficial temporal artery, which is expected in layer 3. This anechoic structure is the sentinel vein. It runs through the layers of the temple from the interfascial plane and can be huge, up to 9mm diameter. So its snaking pattern is pretty easy to spot. This informs me that my axis for temple augmentation has to be from the temporal crest to avoid the massive filler lower down. Now, checking the cheek hollow, we've layers of skin, subcutaneous fat, parotid, masseter, and bone. I'm content this section of the face is free of polyalkylamide, and I will choose an axis from the superior part of the lateral cheek to place PLLA into the subcutaneous plane. Starting the treatment, I've guided my cannula into the subcutaneous plane. I can see I am above the superficial temporal artery, and once I am happy with my position, I can inject. It may seem like I'm very close to the STA, but you can see a tissue space between my cannula and the vessel, and the STA is encased in fascia. I'm also using a 22 gauge cannula, which is my preference and reduces the risk of vessel trauma further. I deposit a little more product and work my way across the temple. Here you can already see some sculpture, which is now acting as a spacer between STA and cannula. This is a motion or flash artifact caused by the fluid coming out of my cannula. Any rapid movement will cause a Doppler shift. Going back in, I can see there's a good amount of product in this tissue layer now. Don't forget the liquid in Sculptra disappears over a few days and leaves behind the PLLA which will start to induce collagenesis in the coming weeks. Now moving on to the cheek hollow. Again, I have placed the cannula into the subcutaneous plane. It's incredibly thin, less than 4mm according to the scale on the right. You can see how product can easily end up in the parotid if not using ultrasound. Checking my depth, carefully placing the product, there's another motion artifact. I repeat that until the area is filled. So let's see how we got on. Here's her before and here is her result immediately post-operatively. You can see that the temporal hollowing shows a marked improvement. Her cheek hollows also appear a lot less concave and the overall result is one of softening. The very prominent lumps, especially on the cheeks, seem a lot less obvious. She was delighted. There's so much you can do with ultrasound. With ultrasound in your skill set, there is truly never a dull day and it will be one of the most useful tools you will invest in for your practice.